how come all the covers are on your side of the bed? Because all the people are on my side of the bed. I'm not a famous man. Sometimes the venue thinks I'm famous. That's funny to me. I was driving up to a bar while I was doing a show. One show, one night at a bar, they put my name on the marquee. That's cute, because nobody's ever heard of me, but my name was misspelled. It said, tonight, Tommy Drack. I wasn't mad, I thought it was funny. I brought the manager outside, I said, I just want you guys to know you left the E off the end of my last name. He said, we needed that E for the word tonight. It's a pleasure to perform in front of comedy fans like you guys. Sometimes I get invited to perform at company parties, corporate events. Those are no fun. Everybody's uptight. They're in a work environment. I try to price myself out of those shows, you know? <laughs> the last one I did was for the employees of Sam's Club. They only needed one show, but I made them buy 12 of them. I am a married guy, so if you want to hang out with me socially, I can either show up on time or I can bring my wife. <laughs> Some people think that joke's mean-spirited. I want you to know that's our love language. That's how we say I love you. We tease each other, but she is way better at teasing me than I am at teasing her. The other night she turned to me, she goes, I can't sleep. Start doing your act. <laughs> It sounds harsh, but it works for us. I know it's not a record, but I'm, I, I'm proud to tell you guys, my wife and I have been married for 24 years now. I think that's a pretty good run, yeah. Just last week, Facebook congratulated us on nine years of friendship. I didn't know Facebook knew that much about my marriage. No kids, women have a maternal instinct. My wife's best friend had a baby. My wife went over to her friend's house, held a two-week-old sleeping baby for 20 minutes. She comes home, she wants a baby. I called her friend, I said, next time let her hold the flat screen TV. Because I've been thinking about it, and I'm ready. I'm constantly failing as a husband. My wife will give me the simplest chore. I'm going to mess it up. She sent me to the store to get her deodorant. I couldn't find her brand. How am I supposed to find something that's invisible, unscented, and secret? <laughs> There's no sharing in my marriage. We don't share anything. I sleep on the right side of the bed. My wife sleeps in the middle. <laughs> then she has the nerve to complain in the morning. How come all the covers are on your side of the bed? Because all the people are on my side of the bed. <laughs> kind of interesting. My wife is 12 and a half years older than me. Yeah. My wife is what they call a cougar. <laughs> which means that when she caught me, I was the slowest of my herd. <laughs> Women always want to talk to me about the age difference. Some of them are mad about it. I had a lady come up to me, she goes, I don't understand your marriage. What could you two possibly have to talk about? We have twice as much to talk about. We're from two different generations. <laughs> we could teach each other stuff the other one didn't learn growing up. My wife taught me all about Watergate and Nixon resigning. And I taught her how to find the warp zones on Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> We have a lot in common, music. I'm a big Beatles fan. She was alive when they were together. <laughs> I want my wife to have whatever she wants. My wife won't tell me what she wants. That'd be too easy. <laughs> she wants me to guess. I'm not a good guesser, so she gives me clues. It's my job to figure them out. My marriage is like an episode of CSI <laughs> where they never catch the killer. <laughs> Never's an exaggeration. Sometimes she gives me a clue I figured out makes me feel like a good husband. A few years back, we're at the movie theater watching a movie called Burlesque. There's a scene in the middle of this movie where everybody sings the song, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. My wife whispers in my ear, this is my favorite song. And Christmas is coming up. So I bought her the soundtrack. <laughs> She was speechless for a whole week. 
I do most of my shows on Carnival Cruise Lines. I just signed off a ship called the Carnival Vista in Cozumel, Mexico a couple days ago, so I could be here tonight. I know. It's hard to believe, right here at Dry Bar. <laughs> the same entertainment that you would get on a cheap Mexican cruise. <laughs> cool part about the ships, I get to be in the Caribbean. Last week I was in the Dominican Republic and I got to take a tour of that factory where they make Major League Baseball players. <laughs> See where they put the arms on, a lot of torque. <laughs> Another fun part about ships, about half the time I have little kids in my audience, that's fun. I had a little girl come up to me after a show and say, you're my favorite comic. I said, aw, thanks. The little boy with her said, you're the only comic she's ever seen. <laughs> then the little girl looked at the little boy and said, you're my only brother and you're not my favorite. <laughs> I also perform on land. I've performed in every state. People always ask, what's my favorite city? Hard to pick a favorite. I love all of them. Las Vegas is interesting. Everything's allowed there. We were coming in from the airport. I saw a sign on the freeway that said, buckle up. It's our only law. <laughs> when I got married, I took my wife to Las Vegas for our honeymoon to be romantic. We went up to a roulette table and we bet on our ages. If we want to bet on our ages now, we have to play Kino. <laughs> I'm in the airport all the time. I'm a professional traveler. Here's my pro traveler tip for you guys. Next time you fly, this will make your trip through the airport more fun. Then make you take your shoes off going through security, put them up on that conveyor belt. Right after you take your shoes off next time, go ahead, take your pants off. <laughs> put them up on the conveyor belt. Nobody's looking right at you. Everybody's focused on their own stuff. They only see you out of the corner of their eyes. So don't make a big deal about taking the pants off. Make it smooth and natural. Right after the second shoe, slip off your pants, fold them up nice, put them on top of the shoes. It's gonna take practice. But if you do this right, people behind you in line will start to take their pants off. I did not see this on the news. This is interesting. Why? Why wouldn't they report that? I, I would've worn different underwear, I think. If I didn't know this was coming. These are my comfortable, I'm gonna be flying all day underwear. Not my strangers might see them underwear. I grew up in a place called Danville, California, which is near San Francisco, California people. I think there's a lot to be learned from my home state. It was the first place to make it illegal to smoke cigarettes indoors. And ever since then, the whole state has been on fire. <laughs> I just did some shows back home. When you drive across the Golden Gate Bridge now, there's a kid with a gun standing there, a Coast Guard guarding the bridge. I'm guessing this wasn't this guy's first choice of duty guarding a bridge, if you're not a troll or a billy goat. I don't think they should make you guard a bridge. I don't live in California anymore. 22 years ago, I moved from Northern California to Houston, Texas. That's my home now, yeah. That's a weird move. There is a completely different cost of living. I sold a 1,200 square foot condo in California, made enough money to move to Houston and buy the Astros. There are some similarities. They're both hugely populated cities. They both have lots of traffic. I've noticed a major difference. When people cut each other off on the road in Houston, they're a lot friendlier to one another than they are in San Francisco. And I think that's because in Houston, everybody has a loaded gun in their car. <laughs> it's a smiling and waving when you know the other guy has a gun. I don't have a gun, but I have a really good reason for not having a gun. I know me. If I had a gun, people I love would be dead and I'd be in prison. Some of the laws shocked me being a California boy. When I first moved to Houston, this was their liquor law. They've since changed it. When I first moved to Houston, you were allowed to have an open container of alcohol in your car, as long as the driver wasn't drinking it. But if you read your gun permit law, you couldn't have the open container of alcohol in the same car with the loaded gun. So that was a decision you had to make before you left the house. Is it a Colt 44 or a Colt 45 night? I can conceal, then consume. <laughs> shots are shots. 
I had a happy childhood. I wasn't good at being a kid. I didn't get into trouble. I just wasn't good at things that kids are supposed to be good at. I think I was the world's worst Boy Scout. I could never get the merit badge I was going for. That was my problem. I tried to get my orienteering badge where they give you a compass and a map, send you into the forest. I didn't get my orienteering badge that day, but three days later, they gave me a wilderness survival badge. <laughs> I tried to get my mile swim badge. I couldn't get it, but my friend Dave got his lifesaver badge that day. <laughs> I got my mile swim badge the next year, but I was going for my kayaking badge. <laughs> I think if I had a message for kids, it's extracurricular activities. If you stay busy, you don't have time to get into trouble. I'm such a fan of extracurricular activities. Whenever the kids come to my door collecting or selling stuff, I always give them money. I'm a sucker for a little kid at my front door. It was sad though, last month, kids from the FFA came by, little farmers. They were collecting because their barn burned down. 17 show pigs died in the fire. First responders said it smelled delicious. <laughs> Huge financial loss for the FFA. They're looking for donations right now. They need paper plates, barbecue sauce. <laughs> Bread, iced tea, side dishes, napkins. Whatever you got, send it along. <laughs> I'm jealous of kids today. What a good time to be a kid. Kids have so much cool stuff now that I wish we had when we were little, like the internet and attention deficit disorder. <laughs> Who knew me acting out and getting poor grades was just a cry for medication? <laughs> I had to figure out I needed meds all by myself when I was 18. <laughs> they pull you out of class, hook you up, send you back. First grade's like a rave. <laughs> Last month I was on a cruise ship, I said attention deficit disorder on stage. A little boy down front, couldn't have been older than seven, stood up in the middle of my show. He goes, it's not attention deficit disorder. It's attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Sat back down. <laughs> right in the middle of my show. Like he forgot to take his pills or something. I looked it up on the internet, the kid was right. The internet, that's what I'm jealous of. My generation invented the internet. None of us know how to use it. <laughs> Every kid you meet, hand them any device within moments, they're masters of it. They have instant access to all the information on the planet. When I was a kid, if I got assigned a report in school, I had to pick a topic that started with the letters A through H. <laughs> Cause those are the encyclopedias we got before my parents stopped paying for them. I tried to do a report on Constantinople. It said, see Istanbul. I'm like, we don't have I. <laughs> this is due tomorrow. I gotta pick a different city. Did a report on Abu Dhabi. First city I found. I recently had to change my email password, so now I have to change my cat's name. <laughs> That's an awkward conversation to have with a pet. <laughs> Mittens, come here, this is important. <laughs> Your name's not Mittens anymore, daddy got hacked. <laughs> Your new name is Boots. <laughs> Boots underscore 1357. <laughs> the other day a teenager handed me his phone and asked me to help him take a selfie. I think if I'm holding the phone and you're in the picture, it's not a selfie. He said, well then help me take a somebody else -y. He didn't know the word picture. I think we're taking too many pictures. I think it needs to stop. It's not the kids either. It's the old people taking too many. You know why I think us old people take too many pictures? We can't believe they're free now. We used to have to buy film. We were paying by the picture. We had to decide whether or not what we were looking at was worth it. And back then, we didn't even know if it was a good picture for like two weeks. Should we take another picture? I don't know if we're cute right now. I don't think we should. We only have six of these left. Two weeks later, you get an envelope filled with glossies. Half of them were garbage. Remember how hard it was to restage a photo two weeks later? 
Well, kids, put your Christmas PJs back on. Mom's eyes are closed in this one. Good thing the tree's still up. We didn't take selfies. Cut half your face out of that, that cost you a quarter. We didn't risk it. I still don't take a selfie. Closest thing I take to a selfie is a close-up of that bump on my back to get a better look at it. Anyone else playing pimple or mole? I'll tell you what, back when we were paying by the picture, nobody at the photo mat ever built a picture of a cheeseburger and french fries. I don't care how beautiful your food picture comes out. You're gonna frame it, put it on the wall? That's my wedding day. That's my nephew's christening. That right there? That's a lunch I had about eight years ago. Or you're not gonna believe this. That ended up being a pimple. I'm jealous of the useless technology kids have now. I can't believe their video games. So cool. Even the simple ones are cool. Guitar Hero? What a great idea for a game. I grew up playing a game called Burger Time, another game called Paper Boy. <laughs> Low paying jobs, that was my video game. <laughs> These kids get to be rock stars. I was reading about it, there's a new version of Guitar Hero, plugs into a real guitar, teaches kids how to play guitar for real. That's great, but everybody can't grow up and be a musician. We need games that teach other skills. Copy Machine Hero, when's that game coming out? <laughs> Level three, Paper Jam, deal with it. Level five, change the toner, figure it out. <laughs> I made it to Colate. <laughs> Office people know, Colate and Staple. That is a big boss on Copy Machine Hero. I'm jealous of the books the kids have now. I've been reading all the books written for young people. I read The Hunger Games, The Twilight Series. My seven favorite are the Harry Potter. Read the Harry Potter books, especially if you're old. It's printed in a larger font. <laughs> Written at a seventh grade level, you feel like you're kicking butt. <laughs> I read a hundred pages one day, I only had to look up four words. <laughs> when I was young, they wanted me to read the Lord of the Rings books. I barely made it past the map in the front of the book. <laughs> Harry Potter knocked out all seven of them. I was embarrassed to be caught reading a kid's book though, so I wore my invisibility cloak. <laughs> if you're not laughing, you're a muggle. <laughs> Harry Potter's an orphan. Harry Potter doesn't have any living parents. You know who else is an orphan? I looked it up on the internet. Spider-Man, Batman, Superman. What are we saying to our kids? If I didn't have these parents, I could fly. <laughs> I think that's the wrong message. We're sending wrong messages all the time. I just did some shows in a little historic town called Springfield, Illinois. There's an Abraham Lincoln Museum there. I thought, that's cool. I want to learn more about Lincoln. You know what I learned? Lincoln walked 10 miles each way to school, never missed a day. And to celebrate his life, we give our kids the day off. <laughs> I think President's Day should be the day all the kids walk to school. <laughs> Everything isn't cooler now. Some things were more fun when I was little. Halloween used to be more fun. Halloween's sad now. Kids trick-or-treat in the middle of the afternoon. They only go to the houses of people that they already know. Ooh, that's spooky. When I was little, we had to face fear and earn our candy. My parents would drive me somewhere in the middle of the night, drop me off alone, make me trick-or-treat my way back to the house. I didn't know where I was and I couldn't see out of my mask. I had to say trick-or-treat. Do you know which way I live? <laughs> that always put me in the same homemade costume, an all black costume with no reflectors. <laughs> I don't want to be a ninja again. Tommy, remember, ninjas are quiet. <laughs> and they walk in the middle of the street. <laughs> If you were lucky enough to make it home, what'd you have to do back then? Dump all your candy out on the floor, spread it out. If anything was unwrapped or tampered with, you had to eat that right away. <laughs> because it could go bad. <laughs> Most of stand-up comedy is exaggeration. I wish I was exaggerating this next story. 
I had a kid come to my door trick-or-treating last year at three in the afternoon. Five-year-old boy dressed as the devil. I opened the door, tick or treat. <laughs> trick-or-treat, it's the middle of the day. Why aren't you trick-or-treating after dark? He goes, oh, I'm scared of the dark. You're the devil. <laughs> You're the prince of darkness. Halloween's about fear. You can't handle fear. You're not getting any candy. Get into character. And I closed the door. <laughs> Feeling pretty good about myself till a minute later when the devil's mom came to the door. <laughs> she is way scarier than the devil. <laughs> Some kids are extraordinary. One of my personal heroes is a young lady named Bethany Hamilton. A few years back, she was 13 years old, surfing, got attacked by a shark, got her arm bitten off. Three weeks later, she's on TV surfing again with one arm. I went skiing eight years ago. I fell, hit my ear, kinda stung, haven't been back. <laughs> I don't do dangerous things. I get injured doing safe things. I was in a horrible Thanksgiving-related accident. I'm gonna tell you guys what happened to me. I don't want it to happen to you. We've all noticed old people will come out of retirement to cook something for the holiday. And the older you are, the better your gravy is. That's how that works. I don't know why, but I'm curious. I'm paying attention. I'm trying to learn. Near as I could tell, you have to have an arthritic grip on a fork and some sort of palsy to get all the lumps out. Get a good do on it. <laughs> Grandma stopped taking her pills last week. This is gonna be the best gravy ever. <laughs> she made meringue in 12 seconds this afternoon. <laughs> She's faster than the mixer, that's a house record. <laughs> I'm a good kid, I love my relatives, they look tired. I said, you guys have been working too hard. Enjoy your holiday, hard part's done. I'll keep an eye on the food. Kitchen's where the accident happened. There's one big pot with a lid on it. I found out the next day they call that pot a pressure cooker. <laughs> I wanna see what's under the lid. Bam, blows up in my face. I was in the emergency room on Thanksgiving. You know the best doctor? He doesn't work on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I got a kid who was excited because he had a customer. <laughs> he took one look at my burns, he goes, dude, you're lucky. He called me dude. You have second degree burns. That means you get all the blistering and skin damage of third degree burns. But your nerve endings remain intact. So you get to feel the pain. And the pain was heightened in my case because I have a medical condition. I am a man. I was born that way, it runs in my family on my dad's side. <laughs> There's a mouse in my house, I'm thinking, great, now I have mice, what do I do? I read on the side of a box of NutraSweet, what I thought was a healthy substitute for sugar, has been proven to cause cancer in laboratory mice. I'm thinking, perfect, I sprinkled this stuff all over the house. <laughs> so the mouse would get cancer and leave. Didn't work, two weeks later I found the mouse in my microwave, bald but recovering. <laughs> Wonderful part about my job, I get to work with comics from all over the world, different comics every week. I recently got to work with a British comic. I've met some very nice British people. This was not a nice British person. One of the first things he asked me was, hey, are you a hockey fan? I said, yes, but in America, we call it Canadian stick soccer. <laughs> this upset him for some reason. He gets right in my face. He goes, that's the thing about you Americans. You're all ignorant and arrogant. I said, I don't know what those words mean, but I bet it's something good. <laughs> then he says this to me, he goes, well, I hate all Americans because of your politics. I said, that's a silly thing to say, because in America, we have a two-party system, which means half of the Americans hate the other half. <laughs> Pick a team. <laughs> then I got proud. I said, by the way, when you were growing up in England, did they make you learn to speak German? He said, no. I said, you're welcome. <laughs> Provo, Dry Bar, Vid Angel, I love all you guys. Thank you so much. You're very generous. Audience.